Yeah, well, first of all, I would like to remark that what we're, what we're watching there, or we, 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 we can see here is just normal people by bike, using the bike as, uh, they're not identitarian cyclists. They're just normal people that are, that are using the bike on a normal basis because it's useful and it's comfortable to use. You can see the bike lane in the center, no cars, right. no buses. Yeah and a much, much wider uh, pedestrian space. Yeah. Gosh, so lovely. Yeah, I, I look forward to uh, seeing the next uh, step and the next phase. Um, so- but, 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 you, but you know, John, it took yeah, yeah. Yeah. maybe six years to do that. Yeah. And yeah. That, that's a slow pace. Yeah. We should you know. be doing one of those installations every month. Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Zimmerman, and that was Manuel Calvo Salazar, uh, also known as Manu. <laughs> Manu is uh, joining us for the second time here on the Active Towns podcast, but the first time on the video version of the podcast. He is from Seville in Spain, and we are going to be talking a little bit about, well, extensively about the amazing transformation which has taken place in Seville over the years, uh, really over the last 20 years, beginning back in 2003, and then the build out of their comprehensive cycle network within 18 months uh, and, and really materializing in 2008. Uh, you are going to have a ball with this one. It is a lot of fun and uh, I can't wait to, for you to see it. So let's dive right in. This is Manu Calvo. Manu, thank you so much for rejoining me on the Active Towns podcast. Welcome. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure always to be here with you. Yeah, I say rejoining because this is your second time on the Active Towns yeah. podcast. A couple years ago, uh, you were on board uh, for the audio only version. So this is special. This is a great opportunity for uh, the, the video audience, the YouTube audience, and we've got some important updates uh, for the audio only audience as well. But uh, before we dive in all the details, uh, Manu, why don't you just take a quick moment to introduce yourself to the audience? Who is Manu? Well, Manu, I think it's a, it's a person that is uh, worried about these sustainability issues, would like to see a better and more sustainable society. It could be possible to be uh, happy and you know happy a happier f future for everyone. Uh, that means that we have to be uh, sustainable in the first place. We have to uh, take care of mother land and mother earth. So I think that's a fight that we are we're uh, heading in the next uh, decades. Maybe I've been with fighting or already for the last three decades or four. And, you know, uh, taking into account that I'm, I'm making a living of that because I'm a urban sustainable mobility consultant and uh, someone that has also specialized in eco-urbanism and more sustainable cities. And where are you based out of? Yeah, well, I'm based in, in Seville, in Spain, southwestern Spain. And uh, we've been able to ha have some really great progress when we talk about cycling mobility and promoting uh, cycling mobility all around the city. So I've been involved in that process since almost uh, 20 years ago, which is a really long time. And right now I'm working all around Spain and Latin America and other uh, cities trying to help local governments and people uh, to get on onto a bike and just uh, share this happiness that everyone can experience when you uh, move around by bike. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And for, for those that don't know the special story that is uh, Seville and the experience uh, that the city went through and the cycle network, can you just kind of briefly give an overview of that? And, and I'll, I'll actually pull up um, from your PowerPoint presentation, sort of the overview maps of the cycle network as it develops over time. But I'll let you kick it off and start that conversation. So 
What is it that is special about Seville as a city and the cycle network that, that evolved and emerged? Well, Seville is, uh, in terms of urban mobility, is a normal uh, city which lost cycling mobility uh, many decades ago. And we uh, sort of gave the city or all the public space that we have in the city or almost all of it to uh, car traffic. And so we were experiencing and we are experiencing experiencing all the uh, problems that uh, bring this this giving of this public space to the car to the car traffic and but in 20 Oh, three, two, 2003, 2004, we have the opportunity to have uh, people in the local government, in the local council, that were worried about uh, sustainable mobility and also shared the vision of having um, a city w- that were friendlier, more friendly for, for cycling mobility. So they um, started some policies that were able to transform in this way uh, the urban mobility of the city. So we went from zero point something percent of the uh, model share by bike, made by bike, to uh, almost seven percent in just uh, three or four years. So we uh, multiplied by a thousand those trips. We went from seven thousand uh, in two thousand three to seventy uh, thousand trips a day in two thousand and eleven which has been the, uh, the record time for, for cycling mobility. After that, it went down because we had a local government that were not, was not supportive for cycling mobility. And then it's recovering again uh, with other processes that are happening also in the city, in, uh, in every European and maybe a Latin America city also, or American city or many cities around the world, uh, uh, we are welcoming, I think, the, uh, the e-scooters. So we, are, we have more people in the uh, cycle lanes but not as many cyclists right now. Got it. So, and if I put a, a visual to the the actual uh, cycle network uh, as it sort of evolved over that period of time that you just mentioned, this is sort of what we looked at. So you, you mentioned 2003, and then so a couple of years later in 2005, uh, this is all we had when it came, came to the safer all ages and abilities uh, facilities, cycle tracks and protected and separated facilities. This is all you had in 2005. And then in 2008, um, we really had that emerging of a, a complete cycle network. And as you described it to me back in 2018, when I met with you there in, in Seville, is that it, you were poised and ready to move forward then the economic downturn happened and the collapse of the economy happened and there was an opportunity. So you had this build out, literally that initial build out in, in about 18 months. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. We were, we planned the whole thing from 2000, 2003 to 2006 and then started working on the implementation of the network. And this is a really important concept, John. I always uh, like to stop here because the, uh, the uh, most important concept here is the network. We're not uh, talking about cycle lanes or cycle tracks or infrastructure. We are talking about having uh, a whole network, uh, what we called at that time a basic network in the scope of Seville and the urban area of Seville, of the central Seville, uh, where all this happened, uh, we were talking about 80 uh, kilometers. That would be maybe 50 miles of that basic network. And that was the network that uh, uh, um, made possible uh, for everyone to grab a bike and cycle around and get from A to B. So uh, the, we, after that, in, in the next uh, five, or maybe three or four years, we had what we call the second phase. So we added 40 kilometers more to the network, and that's uh, 2010. And uh, that's, that drawing uh, shows us a network of about 120 kilometers. At that point, almost every big avenue or every uh, main avenue in the city had 
its um, cycle lane placed there. And after, after that, we've been expanding the network and maybe uh, expanding also the density of the network. And we, right now we can talk about 200 kilometers of, of, of cycle lanes, but always a network. They're not, or almost, there are not any uh, uh, cycle lanes that are being built that are unconnected. So it's the, the expansion of a network and this concept must be, or is really, really the most important thing, talking about cycling infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And also, I would also say that this, at least this basic network should be uh, built fast in no more than four years. If, if it's not done like that, you know, it, it can happen that everything slows down and, and you never have enough cyclists to get around and, and, and for us, our experience and in, in, in a lot of cities that I'm working uh, right now, uh, they're experiencing that it's important to be, uh, to go fast in the building or the implementation of the network. And I remark, I'm remarking again, the uh, concept of the importance of this concept, the network. Yeah. And when we zoom in on this particular uh, network map, and everything in the center here of what I'm zooming in on. Explain what that circle is right there. What does that represent? That represents the historical center of the city. Uh, Seville has the third uh, biggest historical center in, in Europe. It's about, uh, it has a diameter of about one mile or so in any direction, so it's, it's almost a perfect circle, as you can see it there. There, the uh, streets are really narrow because the, it's medieval uh, shape and Muslim period uh, urban tissue. So uh, it, it's not possible to have any, any infra separated infrastructure in those streets. Uh, and I would say, I would even go even further to say that uh, those streets are super, super narrow, as you mentioned. Uh, most of them, if I remember correctly, are cobbled streets. And so they're, they're sort of slow streets. And so it's an environment where uh, people walking frequently, people on bikes, people in cars are all sharing that space. And it's an ultra low speed area. And I would also go for, so far as to say, and we'll see this a little bit in the, the video that, that I'm going to play of the condition that existed back in 2018, is that... Uh, in that circle, there's also the, 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 the old historic wall is there, too, because it was a walled city. Yeah, actually, that's the, 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 uh, the historical center or the limits of the historical center uh, uh, right now. They're placed there because there used to be a wall. Exactly. They uh, yeah. were built by the Muslims uh, almost a thousand years ago. We, we just uh, conserved some tiny uh, pieces of that wall, but... Uh, the, the, the shape of the city was almost that, and, and it was like that for a thousand years. Yeah, yeah, and it's beautiful. I'm going to just play some some video in the background um, because this video represents uh, one year later. So I met you in, in 2018, and, and I was just out riding in the morning during rush hour. Um, and, and so let's talk a little bit about that condition that existed uh, in 2018 while, you know, because this is kind of a, you know, a special point in time in 2018, you all had attracted a great deal of attention because of the success of that initial build out of the the network. And, um, and, and eventually we start talking about later on in this video about some of the things that need to be done. But go ahead and talk a little bit about the condition that we had in 2018. This sort of represents what we saw on that map in 2017. And, uh, and, and this will set the platform for some new photos that you have of the, the current conditions. So going back to 2018, talk a little bit about what we're watching here. Yeah, well, first of all, I would like to remark that what we're, what we're watching there, or we, we, what we, what we can see here is just normal people by bike, using the bike as, uh, they're not identitarian cyclists. They're just normal people that are, that are using the bike on a normal basis because it's useful. 
and it's comfortable to use. So uh, you see normal gear, uh, no special uh, sportish uh, stuff, uh, urban bikes, you know, uh, they, they, they could be walking, they could be uh, grabbing a car or they could be uh, getting to a bus. But in this position for them, it's useful and it's comfortable to, to use the bike to, to get around. And that's, that's what they do. So that's, that would be the first point. Uh, the infrastructure is safe. Uh, you can see, uh, you've seen already many kits on the uh, chairs on top of the bike. So uh, it's in, safe. And in fact, and I'm going to switch use. over yeah. to a photo over here real quick too, because since you said that, I I put this photo, I pulled this photo up, and then we'll 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 hit re replay on this uh, video. But uh, this is my one of my favorite photos of the entire uh, trip is right here. Yeah, that just that just says it all in one one shot. They say a picture's worth a thousand words. Boom, there you go. <laughs> Continue. Yeah, I, actually, I, actually, you took a picture of Patricia and Oliva. They are my friends, actually, and uh, they're still going by bike everywhere. And and uh, I, actually, uh, Patricia, the mother, uh, has uh, moved to the out, out, outskirts of the metropolitan area, and she's using the bike and the transit right now. Ah, very good. And in this shot here, we see a, this gal is, is picking up uh, one of the bike share bikes and is taking off. Talk a little bit about the, the bike share system uh, that exists in Seville. Did that, when did that go in relative to the, the evolution of the network? Just after the network. Okay. Uh, after, after the uh, basic network was uh, built. Okay. We are talking uh, around 2007 or 2008, if I don't remember bad. And uh, what we can say is that we followed the same philosophy. Uh, mm -hmm. We needed a whole network of, of, of public bike stations. <laughs> so right. uh, yeah. 250 stations were placed at once. <laughs> and right now the whole network is it's 265. So it's been expanding just 15. Yeah. Uh, because it, it was... Uh, Almost ninety percent of the of the of the plat network was placed from the beginning. Yeah, that's also now, a as, philosophy. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, as we're rolling down this, the question that pops into my mind is, who was your inspiration? You know, for building out a protected, separated network. Well, our the inspiration is always placed on those cities that that's been really. Uh, where, the, where cycling is really developed and, and it's uh, into the uh, urban culture of, of their mobility and, and livelihood in, in the urban space. We're talking about the Netherlands, maybe, or Denmark. But yeah. actually, yeah. Uh, that was the inspiration. But lots of things that we did in Seville were not a copy of the developments that these people have. Because we, right. the, the, uh, we always thought that we needed a whole network placed really fast, as, as I said. But also, we went for a bi-directional model, which was really easier at that time to implement in Seville. And um, we were we had a clear idea that we had to go from nothing to something in terms of, of cycling mobility, and it was it was not the same situation as the Netherlands or Amsterdam or Utrecht. Uh, do have their their their, their figures is, is about thirty percent of, of of cycling mobility of the model share of the city, which is a lot. Right? We are we're talking about going from from zero to six percent, and it's been stagnant from 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 that point. Hmm? Right, it's right. in six seven percent. It hasn't uh, been growing because Seville has done lots of things in terms of cycling mobility, but. Uh, it's it's not a really uh, good city for other any other uh, sustainable mobility measures nor policies. Right, and you know we're we're rolling through you know some of these areas here where I know when we look at the 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 more recent photos we're going to see you know like some very nice incremental I don't even want to call it incremental but some quantum leap improvements, um, but. Even in 2018, you were already identifying 
uh, some of those future improvements. Is that correct? Sure, because uh, we always, uh, or I always thought that what we did was the beginning of something really big. And lots of things could be done in order to improve all those uh, basic stuff that we went, we, we went through uh, in 2006 and, and after. So, uh, for example, that piece of, of bike lane that you're, you're seeing there has been improved a lot. Uh, and it's gone from 2.2 meters uh, wide uh, cycle lanes to 3 meter wide cycle lanes, improving the capacity and the comfortability of the infrastructure. And, and we are trying to push the uh, local government to have more improvements on the, uh, on the cycle lane the infrastructure. And also uh, developing policies that have a broader scope in terms of sustainability and sustainable mobility, you know, regulating parking spaces, uh, and pushing or, or, or implementing or developing more uh, transit options, uh, in, uh, growing the uh, streets that uh, need to be pedestrianized, calming traffic on the residential areas. Because uh, we always, uh, uh, I always thought, and, and I'm thinking, I'm convinced of this that I'm going to say, is that in the residential areas, it's uh, the, the, the uh, strategy should be the traffic calming and not separating traffic from uh, motorized and non-motorized. I mean, the uh, residential areas should be uh, planned and calmed for uh, people and for pedestrians and for bikes and not for car traffic. Hmm? Yeah. What are you pointing at here? Uh, I'm pointing to the counters, I think. Yeah. <laughs> we have counters there. And uh, actually, it, they're not working right now. <laughs> Oops. Trying, yeah, we are trying to fix that up. So th yeah. this is a, we, we get some audio on uh, at this stage because you end up talking. Um, uh, we're riding with Clarence Eckerson Jr. Uh, from Street Films on this particular day. And uh, so uh, these next couple of clips, uh, this will be a, a nice little um, look back in time. You can kind of remember what you said in 2018 and you can uh, kind of fill us in as to, to what happened and what didn't happen. So let's uh, press play here and give our, uh, our current uh, 2023 voices a, a little bit of a rest. I'm going to take some water too. <laughs> that piece of brand new uh, piece of cycle uh, You know when you say improving the quality, you do that. You can say, you can see like a meter and something more space from the road space you know what we want here is take the first traffic line yeah. and then give this to the sidewalk this space to the sidewalk not yeah, in that so particular place not in that particular uh, place uh, Jan but in okay. uh, and in other places what we've done right now or the local council has done or the bike office has done uh, last two years is taking that first uh, traffic uh, lane uh, and, and improving mm -hmm the quality and the capacity and the comfortability of the uh, of the network there at yeah. that particular uh, place. Why? Because that's the most crowded piece of network that we have now in the, in the whole city. We are talking yeah. about 6,000, even 7,000 cyclists in an everyday basis. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, it's and as I recall, uh, isn't that one of the the routes that's just on the a exterior of the historic core? Sure, sure. Yeah. That's that's that has a really uh, the role of this piece of network is essential because yeah. it connects yeah. it connects just right on the outskirts of the historical center, all the main avenues that are coming and going forward and back and forth from and to the historical center which is the yeah. core of the uh, of the city yeah which yeah. It, it, it could be like downtown on, on an american concept yeah 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 absolutely yeah in fact uh, and, and what you continue to say here is uh you know pointing out to clarence uh, that, uh, you know currently as we were out there riding in the afternoon uh, it was 
relatively calm. There weren't very many people, you know, relatively speaking, compared to when I was out there filming in the morning. And you you turn and look to me and say, remember in the morning, <laughs> rush hour, it was a lot more people. And it was. But even as we're just rolling down through here, I just, I marveled at how many people were out there. And it wasn't just bikes. And like you said, it's normal people. Um, going about their day. But I also saw lots of people, uh, you know, on rollerblades and, you know, just active mobility, sustainable mobility, uh, getting out around. And it looks yeah, like for, here. For example, that, 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 uh, can you, can you go backwards a little bit? Yeah, I can. Yeah. You want to, you want to look at that again? Yeah. We'll, uh, I don't know if there's audio to this. Let's go ahead and turn on. Yeah, there's no audio to this, so I don't know what you're saying. But go ahead and narrate what what's what we're going through no, here. No, the, uh, the the thing is that we are not there. Uh, there. Yeah. There's a there used to be a bus stop there, and the bike lane goes around it. Yeah. And I I mean just joking about that, you know. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah you yeah 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's being fixed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. Because we're like, wait, well, why are we doing this wiggle? Yeah, that's there right. There was a bus stop there. Yeah. And, and uh, it's been fixed. That's it. Just a side. I say, okay, I have to say. Uh, that's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, yeah, this wiggle there. Uh, that makes sense. And the, we're, we're going to come up to um, a really cool section here where we do have audio and I'll turn the audio back on. And then we'll also, we've got some photos that we can go to and, um, and, and look at the current condition. And, and that was when we get to this one critical transit station and, uh, it, and it talk about that inter interaction in the integration. Yeah. Here, here's some rollerbladers right here, family out, uh, getting out, getting some nice healthy, uh, activity in, but talk about that integration between the cycle network and the transit system. Well, something that we planned on the last document that we wrote uh, to the local government, we uh, insisted a lot about the importance of having an alliance between the transit system and cycling. Because uh, something that's really uh, useful for transit is to get critical mass. And we always uh, thought that cycling can help to improve that uh, gathering of people around the uh, the 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 uh, the, uh, the, uh, the nuts or the or the uh, the uh, the stations and the bus stops or, or the transit uh, areas or uh, transit stations. So uh, we propose to have some uh, facilities about uh, safe parking for bikes. Yeah. In the uh, and in fact, the, let's let's p press yeah. play on the video here because we you end up talking a little bit about that because you're absolutely right. One of the things that the Dutch and the Danes do quite well is bike parking facilities at transit nodes and transit hubs. So let's take a okay, listen. This is San Bernardo uh, transit hub. You have train, subway, buses, public bikes, and and the tram. And the tram. So uh, what we, we, we're going to get here in maybe some months, a uh, safe parking facility here oh, for, for bikes. bikes. Yeah. Instead of this? Yeah, you, you, can, you can show them right now, John, the pictures yeah. have just uh, dropped. Yeah, so let's take a look at those uh, photos that we now have of that because that's you know that's pretty cool i mean you you were talking about this in 2018 and saying you know hey we're gonna have this and you know and boom it happened imagine that <laughs> yeah that seems that it's 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 not uh, i mean that picture was taken uh before the opening of the facility. yeah i was gonna say there's there's yeah. construction equipment still in there yeah yeah so. and and but we uh, we are facing um, a problem with management here uh, because okay. the uh, it's it's that that safe parking is not sort of integrated into the transit system. Okay. So it's not it's not managed by a transportation and business or anything like that or a company. And I think that would be the the, the most uh, well the best solution for that because it's not it, it's not being successful at the moment. You can see bikes inside, but it's not, it has 250 places. Right. So maybe it's uh, 10 or 15% of the, or its capacity right now, every day. 
So it should be, uh, it, it, the, the management of the facility should, should be improved, I would say now. Right. No, we are trying to, to, uh, to get better, but we, uh, we, we need to uh, fix problems that, that show up because it's, it's unsorted or, or uncharted uh, um, places and, and territory here. Uh, trying to improve cycling in the city, which is not Amsterdam or the thing, the cities that we are and, and with, uh, we have in mind right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I popped over to, to 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 this slide here real quick because we did point to that counter. You said that the counter is not currently working, but it is important to to know that you know you do have some data estimates, you do uh, some data collection, and I think that's important to the telling the story as well. So why don't you walk us through what we're looking at here? Yeah, that's the counting that we've been made, making from the beginning. You, you can see the growing of the, of the bike trips. Sorry, it's in Spanish. Uh, it's the uh, title it says estimated uh, bike trips or cycling trips. That's a working day. And uh, from 2006, you can see the uh, level of cycling trips and the growing till 2011. Uh, what you have in blue is just uh, bikes, and in orange, what you have is e-scooters. That's the Spanish word for patinete. Hmm? Yeah. And what you can see, that's a phenomenon that it's, it's occurring also in other cities, and especially in Spain and Mediterranean cities, that we, we have more and more e-scooters. As you can see there, uh, from, yeah, from 2019, they've been growing a lot, and... Uh, some of the people that are, that used to uh, use the bike is changing to the uh, to the e-scooters. Sure. But in in Seville, especially in Spain, uh, in the cities that do have a, a cycling network, the e-scooters use the uh, cycle lanes for traveling and getting around. So, actually, they are uh, all of them cyclists and e-scooter users are bike lane users. So if you swap both of them. Right now, we are having more than 80,000 uh, trips on that infrastructure. And we are having problems with the uh, capacity of the infrastructure in, in rush hour. So uh, that's something that is pushing, I think, for uh, politically also for the improving of the network. But, you know, it's something that's happening. And it's we are also uh, facing problems of... Uh, you know, living together, using together the, the the same network or the same infrastructure, the cyclists and the e-scooter users. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I fast forwarded over to this uh, part uh, because you mentioned capacity right there. So I thought, hey, what a great little clip to show uh, for the capacity um, because – a little bit further on from this, we we do have some current photos, and we'll 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 click on to that and take a look at that in your PDF that you sent over. Uh, but uh, I, I'm going to press play here, and we'll we'll listen to what you were saying in in 2018 about this little niggle here, because it it went through a couple of different iterations even before this particular photo or this particular video. So let's take a listen to to Manu and John uh, from 2018 here. This part has actually been rebuilt three times now. And we want to make it even more. No, two times. Yeah, two times. Rebuilt two times. Twice. Now three times. And, and what we want now is to get those three meters there. Yeah. To, be, to, to get the, the, bus, the bus lane. Got it. Okay? Yeah. And then you can uh, transport the whole, or transpose the whole mm-hmm. bus lane to the uh, first traffic lane. Right. And so having just two lanes of traffic. That's the reason why I wanted to play that is because, yeah, you, you, you did it. You literally, you said that's what you wanted to do. And in fact, uh, that's, that is what eventually happened. How, how long ago did that, uh, did that take place? Uh, is that re- relatively from the summer, recent? Yeah. It's the, the, uh, the working, uh, activity it's been happening for 10 months and okay. since summer, okay. yeah, it was opened again. The uh, the new uh, bike lane there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can. Yeah, you, you can see there the uh, the uh, the arrow of pictures that you have there in the bottom of the uh, of the slide. You can see the situation before the uh, network. Yep. The uh, the ne- the uh, bike lane that was built 
on at road space, but at at sidewalk level. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Using road space, but at, at right. sidewalk level. Yeah. And if you, the third picture right now, it's a road uh, platform, yeah. and also road space. Yeah. And, and so the that, reference. that also, yeah, look at that. So, so yeah. what that also does to your your point is you also made more space available for the pedestrian realm too. True. Sure. And uh, yeah, and that yeah. pinch point is much much better. So. Yeah, the uh, the uh, the reference there is the tree. Is the tree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You, can, you see yeah. the tree? Uh, yeah. It has not moved in fifteen yeah, years. Yeah, the tree okay. has not moved. <laughs> <laughs> and and and, and uh, on the top of the of the slide, you can see also uh, another uh, point of the network, and it's been the same uh, methodology there. Uh, we uh, took road space with a bike lane at, at sidewalk level. And, and and the third round or the second refurbishment of the area, we have a wider with more capacity bike lane at road level, always with separated from the uh, car traffic, and that uh, area that was at sidewalk level uh, has been placed for and and the, and the, the pedestrians pedestrian use. Fantastic! Yeah, that's fantastic. It's it's so wonderful to see that evolution that takes place. And, you know, as a reminder, I mean, in 2003, in 2005, you know, we, this was sort of like the, the dream and, you know, it, it, it went through those stages and you, you went from boom, virtually nothing, building it out in 20, 2008, 2010, 2017. And now, um, what you're really doing too is going back in and enhancing what is existing in, in 20, 2017, 2018 and really fine tuning. And again, what we're talking about, what were some of the visuals that we just had were in that ring right there uh, around the, the, the most busy areas of that network. Um, it, it's just extraordinary to see. And I do believe I'm con I'm convinced that it's just a matter of time uh, as you continue to fine tune and you get more support, because, as you mentioned, the, the administrative support, the government support comes and goes. And so the politics of the matter, you know, kind of infiltrate into the support of it. But the fact that you're able to keep it on the ground, enhance it and make it better. I believe that over time it will do, you, you're going to hit another inflection point and you get, you'll, you'll see a bump up in the number of people doing it, especially since you see, as you mentioned, you're seeing more and more just normal people, especially um, who I would say are your, your indicator species. You're seeing women and children out there doing it. That's, inc that's the, the critical part. Yeah. I think that's that. That is one of the uh, major uh, lessons that we can uh, have from happening in Seville. That actually, when you make it useful and you make it comfortable, people mm, just respond and use the infrastructure and get the bike into their mo daily mobility equation. It's an option they, they, they can they can grab and use. Yeah, I think the uh, step that is not happening is that actually this is not a free market a sh or should not be a free market where you can uh, place in the same table in the same conditions car transit walk or cycle and then you choose because actually on that equation you have like four things that you can use. But one of them is really bad for, for the future. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, the uh, public powers and the, the government or the people have to uh, be aware that there's, uh, there are better options. And these options should be uh, improved and supported by the uh, local uh, governments or the uh, national governments or any government that 
uh, are seeking to have that sustainable mobility. That I think that would be one of the lessons that we can uh, also uh, get from the uh, civil experience. Because you get great infrastructure, you get normal people to use the bike, but but you don't do not get more than six or seven or maybe ten percent of the people cycling actually because the uh, you need restrictions for tra- car traffic, especially the possibility to park. We we do know that that would be the uh, the main uh, the main knot that it's not being pushed at the moment. The expectation to park on the destination. Yeah, and I, I went back to this photo here and zoomed in just a little bit so that we can uh, uh, highlight something that's critical to that evolution that took place with this network and, and, and with this particular portion of the network is that, yes, we did take away some uh, a lane. We were able to, to move that over. So it, it has been that incremental sort of step process of encroaching upon what used to be either car parking or car motor vehicle travel lanes. Um, and to your point, at some point in time, yes, you've got your, your safe and inviting protected all ages and abilities cycle network in place. That's great. But you also need to follow that up with other incentives and or friction points to, 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 to really incentivize people, more people beyond that 7%, as you mentioned, to make that trip, that inherently rideable trip, be a, a sustainable mode versus an unsustainable mode. And what I like about this photo is we see a little bit of it all. We see, you know, some trucks and some vans and some buses, the person on the bike, and we see some, you know, private automobiles, uh, you know, in there as well. And so whatever we can do to shift more of those trips onto the bikes, maybe even get some of those van deliveries to be done through cycle logistics, cargo bike logistics, and, uh, and then shift away from, you know, those inherently unsustainable modes that, you know, make those heat waves even worse because, you know, that's Uh something that we, we do recognize because by the way, folks, Seville, this is a hot place. When I was there, it was in June (laughs) and I'll probably be back there in June again. (laughs) So I don't know why I'm, torturing myself but yeah i mean it gets it gets hot in the summertime so it is a place where people will ride yeah yeah we we did never think that uh people were going to use the bike in summertime but but they they do not as much in springtime but they do (laughs) so uh yeah because the the the, uh this video was shoot uh was shot uh maybe in june time right in uh, the month of June. Uh, yeah. And you see how many bikes are there. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's something amazing. Yeah. 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 And there, there's a, a personal scooter that went by now this video, I'm going to just go ahead and let it play up to this point right here. And we don't need to turn the volume up on this. Uh, you're basically just telling me about this particular installation and uh, at the time in 2018, this installation had only been in about three to four months. Why don't you give the the story behind uh, what we're we're looking at here? Well, we're looking at the the, uh, the space that is just placed in front of a school center or a school, a primary school. That's the door of the uh, of the uh, school, and we did have problems. And I and. Uh, talking first person because I was, uh, my children went to this, used to go, used to go to this school. So uh, we, we did have problems of space, uh, the, uh, the walking space and, and the, uh, the staying display, uh, space was really, really narrow. And we talked to the local government in order to have this installation here uh, with uh, tactical urbanism and just bollards and painting in order to uh, increment and grow this space for walking, uh, or almost du- almost double the area, and it was really cheap, really fast to do, and it was really convenient because actually you can see that woman, 
He's, been, he's staying at the uh, used to be parking space. <laughs> so uh, we also planted those trees, those two trees. They are much bigger now, and and they are providing the people more shade, especially in the summertime. Yeah, and it's working uh, pretty well. We are we are in the in my consultancy. Uh, we've been making or some projects for other cities, uh, following that that same methodology and that philosophy, uh, and it's it's been really successful at the moment. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. And and uh, when we were focused on this particular image here, you were you were talking a little bit about how the expanding of the pedestrian space was achieved. Uh, looking forward into this area here. Yeah, you, you, you can see that that girl uh, walking. That used to be mm -hmm. a parking lane. Yeah, and yeah. the uh, and the sidewalk was uh, expanding, and you can see the uh, the old sidewalk and the new sidewalk there. Just and, and the people just is walking in the new one. Yeah. So it's working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what's neat about this particular um, portion of the video is it's the only portion of the video uh, where we're actually inside the historic core. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 And, and something that's being also done right now is that the pedestrianizations, uh, I don't know if that word exists in English. Yeah. Yeah. Pedestrianization. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pedestrianizations uh, yeah, are yeah. taking place outside the historical center. Ah. It, it, from, from a political point of view, pedestrianizing places into the historical center is much easier. Yeah, because yeah, people yeah. understand that, you know, it's uh, history and historical stuff and uh, that should be saved from the uh, pollution coming from the cars and, and the uh, dirtiness of the atmospheric emissions of the cars. Right. But actually, it's been uh, not that much e easy to convince people that pedestrianize should be also placed outside the historical center. But it's happening. Right. Also, ha It's also happening. There's yeah, a... Sh yeah. uh, a piece of the shooting that we are riding along an avenue that it's being pedestrianized uh, six months ago, yeah. right now. And in fact, I want to show so this particular photo that you sent through. Um, why don't you? Yeah, is this kind of what yeah. you're talking about, right? That it's it's uh, you know you, you can see there the plastic uh, wrap of the uh, of the of the light of the of the lights. It's it's not being opened. Well, it's 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 opened right now, but it, it, when uh, I took the pictures, it, w it it wasn't opened yet. The street. You can see Fantastic. the bike lane in the center, no cars, right. no buses, yeah. and a much much wider uh, pedestrian space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gosh, so lovely. Yeah, I, I look forward to uh, seeing the next uh, step and the next phase. Um, so, but, but, but you but you know, John, it took yeah yeah. Yeah. Maybe six years to do that. Yeah. And yeah. That, that's a slow pace. Yeah. We should yeah. be doing one of those installations every month. Yeah. <laughs> but it's taking us, it's taking us six months, uh, six years <laughs> to, yeah. to do that. What do we got going on here? Well, that's a parking installation uh that's uh, that's not a uh, permanent installation. That's okay. always uh, only a place to, for events, so uh, special events, yeah. concerts, special and all event that. parking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And uh, it's really convenient, really uh, inexpensive to build and to uh, to to place and to store also because it's been designed in order uh, to to store it really easily. And yeah. uh, it maybe that parking is there for two days. Yeah, what I love about that, Manu, is that, you know, this is the type of thing that doesn't cost a lot of money, but it helps support behavior change. It helps, you know, reinforce that, hey, if you're going to that event, don't go through the hassle. You know, again, it's incentivized people to be able to do change their behavior. Uh, and so, yeah, maybe there's friction, maybe driving a car to that event is really not made convenient. But guess what? we're going to have, you know, some pop-up parking to, to incentivize and make, make it less, make it friction less for you to take your private bike. So, yeah. And, and what, it. and what is, uh, what is the best? It's full of bikes. You, you can, yeah. you can uh, look at the bikes also 
are locked not to the parking uh, facilities to to the uh, traffic signals or whatever because it, it, you know it's not, there's no uh, place left places left on that facility so yeah yeah and, and but it, again um, John I would say that mm, we don't need a lot of money to do this right but a, a, any of this in in your uh, infrastructure investment concepts, you know, making or building a highway. We're talking about two or three zeros to the investment. If we uh, talk about cycling infrastructure, it's so much cheaper that it's, it's, it doesn't even deserve a discussion. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a matter of money. It's not a matter of, of a lot of time. It's a matter of political will. And that the people understand that we need to do this, and it's in, and actually we're gonna have better lives and happier lives if we do if we do it. Could be it could be the opposite, and we are lacking this uh, the, this stuff. And uh, as you uh, as as pointed out, it always seems impossible until it's done. Nelson Mandela. <laughs> Just uh, imagine, like the. Uh, Lennon's uh, song. Imagine another situation, and that just go for it, and and it's possible because it actually the result is better. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, based on where this journey has come now over all of these these years, from two thousand three to where we're at now, uh, twenty years later. Uh, what does the future hold for Seville, and what are you working on uh, currently? Well, I'm trying to apply the same, the same uh, things all around the uh, globe, <laughs> and also trying to make cycling policies or integrate these cycling policies into wider, a wider scope of taking into account sustainable mobility. So trying to work cycling and walkability and retaking uh, public space or urban public space in order to have better cities or improving transit or make this alliance between transit and active mobility a reality. And I'm working on that. I'm, I'm, I'm focused on, on, on that uh, kind of stuff. Fighting a lot, but I'm convinced that the events that we are going to have to face in the coming decades, all this stuff, it should be a clear, or is it going to be clear that we need to go for it and that's going to happen no matter even who is in government because we we are, uh, it's going to be compulsory. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, it's a matter also of economic strategy, I think. Yeah. And what better way to, to close this out than to, to uh, with a declaration, be happy, <laughs> cycling and walking. <laughs> yeah, sure. And uh, as I said before, we are lucky because if you cycle and walk, you're going to be happier. And But imagine it, 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 it wouldn't be the case, but, but it's the case. We are lucky. Yeah. If you cycle and walk, you're going to be happier. So go for it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Manu, thank you so very much. I can't wait to, to, to visit you again and see some of these enhancements. And uh, one of the great things about um, going back to a place, you know, years later after improvements have been made is being able to do just like you have with those side by side by side photos, those three panels. Uh, I love nothing more than to roll down those same streets and shoot video so you can have like the side by side of what that experience is. Uh, I can't wait to, to see it. So keeping my fingers crossed that I can make that uh, trip happen in sure. June again. I don't know why I keep going in June. Uh, <laughs> I tried to make it happen in April, but uh, it, it doesn't seem to be well, uh, together. You know, October and November should be also a good month to come here to yeah. Seville. 
Yes. Well, wow. I will. I will say this. I will say this about um, uh, June in in Seville. I love the jacaranda trees because they're in um, they're in bloom and the purple lavender everywhere. It's just so photogenic and so beautiful. So th there is that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, as always, John. Thanks a lot for having me yes. here. It's always a pleasure to share with you. Anytime talking about some great issues and some very important things, and of course you you will be really really welcomed here in Seville at home, and bring with you whoever you want. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you so very much, Manu, for for this opportunity to to reconnect. Thanks to you, John. Always a pleasure. Muchas gracias. Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Manu. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. <laughs> Leave a comment down below. And most importantly, please share it with a friend and spread the word about what is entirely possible if we have the political will and the courage to do something different and <laughs> break out of the status quo, if you will. Uh, again, I'll have another episode next week. And until then, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much. <laughs>